from Logan's seriously messed up childhood affecting his entire life, to Jerry using the Roy family's drama for her own benefit, here are some of the darkest traits of Succession's key players according to therapists. Starting with the Roy family patriarch, anyone who's watched the show knows that Logan Roy is probably not in the running for any Father of the Year awards. While it's true that the Roy family would be nowhere without him, Logan is a cutthroat businessman who won't even think twice before throwing his children under the bus for his own interests. I mean, building a multi-billion dollar company from scratch is bound to give you a power trip, but it seems like that's all there is to Logan, giving his children some serious daddy issues, especially in season 4. With the future of Waystar as uncertain as ever, throw an acquisition deal with tech guru Lucas Matson, add Logan's declining health into the mix, and the brand new season sets the audience up for quite a wild ride. But what if I told you that there was more to all the drama? Sure, Logan definitely is a power-hungry media mogul who will do anything to stay on top, but according to therapist Kelly Scott, his rough childhood might have had a huge role to play in shaping the kind of person that he is in the show. Now, for those of you who don't know, Succession actually keeps dropping hints about this every now and then. Roman, you can tell us together, Dad. I felt we had this figured out. Yeah, it just might be better, you know, if we all here. For instance, in season 1, we see his entire back covered in scars, showing the trauma Logan's been through. And Scott believes that's the reason why the boss man at Waystar has so much trouble opening up and being vulnerable. It's because he doesn't want to lose control at any cost. Why? Well, because he just loves the power. I mean, you can practically feel how happy Logan is screwing his kids over, taking things away from them in the blink of an eye. Remember when Logan hits Kendall's son Iverson back in season 1? And season 2, when he takes his anger out on Logan? It's almost like the man is trying to replicate whatever he's gone through in his past, and Kelly believes this is because he wants everyone to be as miserable as he is. That's not where it ends though. Logan's darkest trait is his Machiavellianism, which means that to him, nothing is right or wrong. All that matters to the man is his own self-interest. Psychological studies actually suggest that for someone to be as manipulative and wicked as Logan Roy is, he'd have to be a straight-up psychopath. I mean, I'm not really surprised here. Now, with all the issues Logan deals with, some of them have definitely been passed down to his children, and I think Kendall might have gotten the shortest end of the stick. Where do I even start with Kendall Roy, Logan's best boy, who never seemed to have things working out in his favor? From season 1, Kendall has been going head to head with his father, and every single time, Logan manages to get in the way of his son's plans. Obviously, that tells you a lot about their personal dynamics. At the beginning of the series, Kendall is willing to do just about anything to earn his father's validation. Talk about living in someone's shadow. Am I right? According to Scott, Kendall is so desperate to be the chosen one that every decision he makes is based on what his father would like. But with Logan repeatedly screwing Kendall over, we see the heir apparent losing it. I mean, Kendall's downward spirals might be pretty hilarious at times, but you can't deny that when his dark side comes out to play, he will do anything to get ahead in the game. I think in the process, Kendall doesn't even realize how similar he is to Logan. Just like the Roy family patriarch, Kendall is willing to behave in narcissistic ways. Ways. He makes empty promises and grand statements, and Scott thinks it's all an attempt to hide the actual emotional mess that the poor guy is on the inside. But hey, Roman isn't all that different. Some would say that Roman is the comedic relief character who's there to break up the overall dark tone of the show. But that's far from the truth. If you ask me, Rome is one of the most complex characters in Succession. I mean, he's definitely messed up in his own way, but having Logan as a father would do that to just about anyone. Compared to Kendall, who Logan tends to favor from time to time, Roman is never his dad's first choice. You often see the younger Roy son engaging in extremely inappropriate behavior. Can we just talk about the entire dynamic with Jerry? But that's just because most of the time, he's just looking for some love and attention, something that his father never never really gave to him. Roman also indulges in a lot of risky behavior, which often includes throwing shade at his father and siblings. Now, according to psychologist Romani Dervasula, all of this points toward Rome's deep-seated insecurities that result in some seriously psychopathic behavior. But Rome isn't the only Roy sibling who needs help sorting out his issues. Shiv is right up there with him. Most fans would argue that Shiv is actually Logan's favorite child, but the sad part is that her dad never takes her seriously. And when you're the only girl in a 
a family full of boys? It can be tough trying to prove your worth, which might be why Shiv likes to use her position in the Roy family to feel powerful. How does she do that? Well, Shiv's narcissistic tendencies tend to come out in her relationship with Tom Wamsgans. Remember when Tom was in charge of the cruise sector and Shiv didn't even give him a heads up before the abuse scandal came out? Yeah, that's exactly how she likes watching people fail. Like father, like daughter, am I right? Not just that, Shiv uses every chance she gets to earn her dad's approval, even going as far as to sabotage her brothers to climb the ranks at Waystar. But if there's one Roy sibling who couldn't care less about Waystar, it's Connor. Connor is Logan's eldest son from Logan's first marriage, making him the black sheep of the family and half-brother to Kendall, Roman, and Shiv. And boy do they treat him like an outsider. No one, and I mean no one in the family takes Connor seriously. But according to Kelly Scott, Connor might just be okay with the distance between him and the rest of the Roys, especially because he knows just how horrible Logan can be. And how did Connor figure this out? Well, it definitely has a lot to do with the fact that Logan had his mother locked away in a psychiatric hospital, pretty much ruining Connor's entire childhood. But while Connor might not be as bad as the rest of his family, his narcissism and Machiavellianism do tend to come out when he tries to use the Roy name to his advantage. I mean, the man goes as far as to use his social status and money to run for president. Not to mention the fact that he quite literally paid Willa to date and even marry him. He's still a Roy at the end of the day. But you know who isn't? Cousin Greg the Egg. The Roys just see him as one of their own. Greg's grandfather is Logan Roy's brother, and the two have a complicated relationship, to say the least. Now, Greg starts off as an innocent little puppy, trying to climb up the corporate ladder and get into his relative's good book. But as the show goes on, we see the young boy pick up on the Roy family's tricks, turning into quite the Machiavellian mastermind himself. And of course, he has Tom to guide him along the way. According to Scott, Tom is the kind of person who gets off on being proximate to power. And what better way to do that than to marry Logan Roy's only daughter? Now Tom is ambitious, and he'll do just about anything to survive, which is why he starts to learn manipulative tactics from all the power players that surround him. I mean, what kind of man betrays his own wife, Tom? But even then, Wamsgans is never quite in a position to overthrow any of the Roys, and ultimately has to give in to their never-ending demands. But while Roys might be intimidating for Tom, they have nothing on Jerry Kelman. Jerry is practically Logan's right-hand woman, handling everything from business planning to legal counsel. She's worked at Waystar for what seems like a lifetime, which means that she has access to all the inside dirt. Trust me when I say that this woman can single-handedly take down the Roys if she wanted to. But according to Scott, Jerry just doesn't want to do that. She's not trying to climb the corporate ladder. I mean, there's no denying that sometimes she likes to play along with the Roy family's manipulative tactics, especially when they benefit her in the long run. But as things get more intense, Jerry likes to stay away from the drama. She prefers her job over all the drama that goes on at Waystar. Star. Who knows? Maybe she just likes the feeling of so many powerful people depending on her. So from Jerry enabling the Roys and their manipulative behavior, to Logan replicating his childhood abuse, these were some of the darkest traits of Succession's key players, according to therapists. Worst, you're, you're an irresponsibler, okay? You're bigging yourself up.